This is Cybert signing into Kane's Wrath on the map Atacama Road for game number one of a seven game show match in the north as the pink steel talons. This is Phoenix. And in the south as the red GDI. This is Bike Rush Owns. Bike Rush Owns versus Phoenix. Some of you may be thinking, isn't it a spoiler that you just said a seven game series instead of a best of seven? But no, this is a best of seven, but all seven games will be played because courtesy of As109, every game there's a $35, well actually 35 euro split to be had. 25 euros goes to the winner, 10 euros goes to the loser, which means every single game does indeed matter in this best of seven, but it's not just that whoever wins the best of seven overall, so at least gets four wins, will win an additional 100 euros. So a big, huge thanks to As109 for sponsoring this show match and for giving us seven games of Phoenix versus Bike Rush Owns in the newest R1, uh, well, release 19, but it's actually D, and now technically the newest release uh, is, I think, F. But at any rate, it is release 19 of 1.02+, plus, and that is what we want to see. Now, As109 had a couple of additional stipulations that he wanted to bring to this show match, for whatever reason, the guy doesn't like Scrim. So there will be no Scrim in this show match, no Reaper, no Traveler, nothing like that. It's gonna be GDI and Nod factions only, which is really interesting that Phoenix chose Steel Talons, knowing that Bike Rush was playing GDI. An interesting choice, and I am excited to see what Phoenix has planned. Now, 25 euros goes to every win, but that is not actually all of the money that As109 wanted to give away. There is an additional bounty on every Sonic Emitter or Obelisk that gets deployed in the match up to five euros per game. So you get one dollar for every Sonic Emitter, one euro for every uh, Sonic Emitter or Obelisk that you place up to five euros per game. So there's an additional $35 per player that can be won. We will see exactly how this shakes out. It's gonna be a lot of numbers to try and keep track of, but we'll see what these players decide to do. There is a couple of uh, last, uh, one last rule really, and that is that the games have to last longer than four minutes. So I guess As109 also wanted a little bit of a no rush rule. And, well, well, I think we'll get past that relatively soon here in game number one. Expansion's coming up. Very normal timings. All things considered, very normal opening. Even without all of these stipulations and ideas from 109, from As 109, this would look like a completely normal tournament game. We've got a little bit of that rocket APC action from both players. For whatever reason, this has been reasonably popular recently. I feel like it doesn't ever do very much, but, you know, Rocket APC is also one of those combinations that can stay relevant for a little while. It's not super relevant in the late game, but uh, sometimes in the ultra late game where we come all the way back around to the low tech early game, it is be it does become relevant once again. Titan is out here on the left side of the map. It is going to get grabbed, but before it goes down, it will eat one pit bull. So goodbye, Titan. Bike Rush Owns will find that kill, but not before losing the Pitbull. Phoenix is going to be going for air after his double refinery at his natural expansion. And again, we just, you know, there have been a couple of tournaments this year that looked very similar, you know, two GDI factions duking it out. I guess it's a little bit of a surprise that it's Steel Talons and not just a GDI mirror. But then guys going straight for the late game. It has been a late game fiesta this year in 2022. Bloodhounds getting placed very deep on enemy territory. 
I feel like you can classify that as a mistake. I don't know what Phoenix thought he was going to be having there as a distraction to keep Bike Rush Owens from just gunning it down those Bloodhounds, but that was a lot of cash down the drain. Bike Rush Owens going to be stealing the Blue Tiberium on top of that, so he gets that extra little cash from the middle of the map, going to be denying that from Phoenix, and looks like Orcas are moving out as well. No Orcas on the deck here for Phoenix. He may have just used that airfield for the Bloodhounds and not much more. One Harvester goes down, second Harvester going to be taking a lot of damage, but the Orcas have almost all been eliminated. Airfield is not quite in time as the Orca does get the final rocket. The Orca strike didn't get the kill. Bike Rush owns, got that with an Orca the old fashioned way. And that is two harvesters down after losing the Bloodhounds in a bit of a mistake there from Phoenix. Not a great start to game number one. Marv is on the way for Master Leaf. Phoenix is aware of this. Couple of pit bulls going to be getting the scout. They might be able to get the kill on this juggernaut. Going to want to keep moving so that he doesn't target, uh, acquire them and take them out. But Firehawks also making their way out. Bike Rush Owens is getting the drop on exactly what Phoenix is doing. It may indeed be a Sonic Emitter Fiesta here on the right side of the map which is also a new breakfast cereal that we're launching next week. Power plant goes down, but the tech center survives. Phoenix not able to get the kill on both, does a bit of damage there, and there's going to be the Marv popping out onto the field. It's going to be the Marvest of the field for Bike Rush Owns. There's a double power plant, and is it going to be Sonic Emitter time? One euro per Sonic Emitter, and that is not a fair fight. Oopsie Daisy, he did not eat his Sonic Emitter Fiesta cereal for breakfast this morning, and that is what happens. That, I, he must not have seen the mar. That was, uh, well, it's not the end of the game per se, but boy, oh boy, does Bike Rush feel good about game number one, and does Phoenix feel bad? Titans moving out, no rail guns just yet. That could be on the way momentarily here. The Marv has the follow-up with the Behemoths always gives a bit of a chance to the GDI, or in this case, the Steel Talons player. Juggernauts are so good. Uh, not so much when you give them away. Donations of Juggernauts not nearly as good. Titan's going to be walking their way around the natural expansion. This APC rocket combo coming back to defend that natural expansion. I think the Titans could win that fight, especially if they went for the crush, but they're going to be backing off regardless. Bike Rush owns posturing near the natural expansion of Phoenix, who's about to run out of cash. Phoenix has limited options. His Marv is his economy for the rest of the game. Uh, MCV should, I assume, be popping on out. We'll see how good I am. It's another behemoth. I'm bad. At any rate, the Marv is going to be harvesting the field, and that's going to be the economy, it seems like, regardless of anything else that happens. Meanwhile, Bike Rush owns, on the other hand, moving forward. It's a single MCV. I think he might have popped out one more MCV. Yes, he did. Dual MCV life. That's a Euro for Bike Rush owns, and we'll see how many more he's able to get. First behemoth takes a couple of shots, but Bike Rush Owens is actually the loser in the behemoth numbers. In terms of behemoths and juggernauts, he's going to try and claim one of the husks, and this Marv is taking a ton of damage. These behemoths are finding their marks. The barracks actually gets bombed out of existence here, denying that engineer. AA Battery's getting some good damage into the air, but Phoenix is honestly going to be really happy with how this engagement worked went for maybe five behemoths in total and he's pushed back the marv he is completely silenced bike rush's front line at the same time he's bought a huge amount of time to marvis the field on the other side of the map are we witnessing a phoenix comeback after several minutes of getting just stomped on by bike rush owns and a couple of mistakes here and there phoenix is bouncing back Bike Rush Owns still is the one with the significant economy. He's the one with the better chance in terms of production, and he is the one who's getting the kill on these behemoths. Phoenix may have wanted to try and back out of this situation rather than committing further to it in worse and worse situation. Phoenix going to be passing through the middle of the map, going to be getting a couple of harvester kills. 
Not as relevant now that we're this far into the game. Those two more Sonic emitters, so Bike Rush Owns is up to at least three Euros in this game. Phoenix marches his way forward. His Marvin, his behemoths are here. The comeback hope is still alive. The potential is here. Bike Rush Owns could falter the defense. If he holds on to this base, it becomes infinitely easier for Bike Rush Owns to take this game. Sniping those behemoth husks would also be nice for Bike Rush. Phoenix pushing the front line further forward, edging closer and closer to that economy and pushing the Marv a bit further back. Shockwave artillery, will it find its mark? The Marv has avoided the first volley, but not the second as another Sonic emitter gets deployed and Bike Rush owns will find the Marv. One and done, hit for hit. You killed my Marv, well, not quite but I'm going to kill yours regardless. The MCB goes down of Phoenix minutes ago, and now the Marv as well as every single behemoth, and that might be the end. Hey, I love it. On the other side of the map in the corner, the one mammoth tank, the one hero mammoth tank, and maybe if Phoenix hadn't lost every single behemoth on the front line, things would be a bit different. But here, Phoenix is just falling to pieces. The Sonic Emitter account, I believe, was for... Bike Rush Owns might be able to sneak one more out. And that will do it, it looks like, for game number one. Onky Onky, number one fan, a.k.a. Big Mole's number one fan, has been defeated. And Phoenix wins $10 in 11 minutes and 44 seconds. Bike Rush Owns claiming a nice 29 euros. I keep saying euros and dollars, and at this point in time at me recording this, the exchange rate is very close to one, so it is actually accurate, essentially either way that I put it. Bike Rush owns actually not as far ahead on economy. I really think that's where the Marv started to clean up that field, those steep upward incline from Phoenix. But that'll do it for game number one. Let's jump into game number two which takes us to the map Slippery Slope for our next match in the North as the Red playing Steel Talons. This is Bike Rush Owns. And in the South as the Pink, also Steel Talons, this is Phoenix. We get ourselves a Steel Talons mirror, which is not something that I expected from this particular show match. I was uh, hoping to see at least a couple of Nod or, you know, you know, like Marked of Cain, Black Hand, whatever. Some Nod games, but I was honestly expecting a lot more GDI. I'm surprised that it's a double Steel Talons game here in match number two. Slippery Slope, it's a map I haven't seen before, so I am glad to see it now in this series. Glad that we get to see at least some more games on this map. Bike Rush Owns going to be feeling good with the start of this series. And choosing to switch it up into a mirror matchup. Well, we'll see if Phoenix might have the advantage now that they are playing the same faction. Once again, with that four-minute rule, every game is going to be pretty much a macro-oriented opener. Uh, I guess if it wasn't, I don't know what would happen. But every game is going to be a pretty big eco boom right in the beginning. You can safely do that. Both players know that, and that is how they are playing. Scouting, Rifleman from both sides. Master Leaf is actually watching this series. But Phoenix managing to sneak through, gets a bit of a scout not very far into Bike Rush's base. Master Leaf was observing these games. Uh, why the hell happened? Probably on his Twitch channel, probably casting them. So you may have already seen it over there. By the way, Bike Rush Owns does indeed have a YouTube channel where he posts uh, pretty consistent Kane's Wrath content. So if you are curious to see his first person view as well as him casting some games, you can check out his YouTube channel there. And, of course, release 19 of 1.02 Plus is the, I don't know, the love project, the passion project of Masterleaf, who is indeed, as I said, observing this game. So if you want to check out Masterleaf's channel, I'll put that in the description as well. Once again, 
we get this rocket APC. Oh, yeah, I'm also using the 4K mod, which is why Kane's Wrath uh, looks as good as it does, and that's also a passion project of Master Leaf. But Kane's Wrath looking good. APCs, they got rockets inside of them. I mean, technically they're MRTs, but we'll see if it gets anything done. I still, I feel like I have yet to see this be very effective. It, it feels like mostly what players do is they get their rocket APCs or whatever and they immediately send them to the other side of the map. I guess maybe some players use them defensively, but in this particular case, Bike Rush Owens is going to have a good read on exactly what Phoenix is doing, and he's going to be feeling pretty happy with that based on how game number one went. You know, if he can keep himself aware of Phoenix's every move, I'm sure Bike Rush Owens is going to be confident to be able to take this series and take the lion's share of the 415 euros that is up for grabs. A couple of APC, APCs trading rockets in the north. Bike Rush Owens trying to drop some mines to bait Phoenix into them. Nice eject on that rocket squad to get the stealth reveal on those mines. And it's not always obvious, but uh, infantry do actually reveal stealth in a small radius. So that's why you'll see players utilize that uh, knowledge and that trick sometimes. MRT fights are significantly longer than APC fights with these repair drones working away on the MRTs. But I guess in this case, two is indeed better than one, but three rocket squads might be better than two. Titan almost gets killed there off by the mines and nice move there by Bike Rush Jones. Oh, the last corner of the mines right on the edge there as Bike Rush Jones is bringing his own Titans to the front line. He is looking to do some damage. Going to be uh, going for the scout there as well. A couple of Titans walking around the base. Bike Rush Owns seeing what he can see. It's going to be a double airfield follow-up for Bike Rush Owns. Some players do like to play this just mass hammerheads kind of style in the mid game. And it looks like Bike Rush Owns is going to be going for a bit of that. Phoenix defending well, getting his own single airfield and actually going to be going orcas. So he is not going hammerheads. Bike Rush Owns on the other hand, for now, it is all hammerheads all day. Rocket MRTs versus Rocket MRTs. Bike Rush Owns is going to at least have enough Rocket Troopers to potentially deal with the Orcas. Bloodhounds once again getting called out by Phoenix. Hopefully a bit of a safer landing this game. There are mines here, but at least the Pitbulls do have the stealth reveal. And that AA turret tags part of the uh, Bloodhounds, but not enough to really kill on anything off. Titan's going to be swinging in. Bike Rush Owns going to have a bit of a surround on these Bloodhounds, so they are going to ev evac pretty darn quickly. And it's the Hammerheads. Where are the AA batteries? Phoenix was not expecting this. First AA battery should be coming up relatively soon, but before that time, the damage has been done. Two more Harvesters getting cleaned up. A massive win here in the mid game for Bike Rush Owns. And now the power plant going to be getting targeted down. So even if an AA battery gets deployed, it might just be offline. Orca is going to be finding their damage on the other side of the map. Bike Rush Owns a little bit more prepared. Orca does go down the MRT, getting some of that value back for Bike Rush Owns. And there's going to be the AA battery into low power mode immediately. And Bike Rush Owns just with free reign to kill off units, infrastructure, maybe even more harvesters as he takes down the orcas on the deck. Supersonic airstrike brings down four of the hammerheads and it's power back online as it's going to be the Space Command uplink, the next target of Bike Rush Owns. Bike Rush Owns spent a lot of cash on those hammerheads, but I feel like he more than got his value for it. Drops another airfield sells off two airfields goes for a second so we can get the orca strike and keep eyes on that space command uplink marv on the way for bike rush owns space command uplink takes away the laser fence and bike rush owns already out with his marv first couple of behemoths stomping their way onto the battlefield for at least for bike rush owns maybe not for phoenix 
Phoenix, no Marv. He does still have his Space Command uplink, and don't underestimate the power of that Shockwave artillery. Orca's coming in. Two Orca's gonna be splitting their rockets. Might not actually find any kills. Ooh, Firehawks. Oh, one more rocket would have killed off that Heavy Harvester. And Bike Rush owns getting so lucky with that Firehawk coming in just in time. The AA battery as well, finding a kill. Marv going to be marching its way forward. It's up against the Titans, and there's going to be the Shockwave Artillery. Where does it land? But it's going to be on the forces of Phoenix, forcing him to activate that adaptive armor, and he is going to be running away. Two more Titans go down, and Bike Rush owns is the one giving chase. Behemoths mounted with their guns, ready to fire just completely obliterating the front line of Phoenix. Ooh. A bad start as Phoenix was hoping to, I guess, go for like a one-two punch. His MCB goes to the south. His army goes to the north. But his army just got deleted. His expansion is exposed. There isn't much Tiberium left here but he's gonna be losing any future prospects and all of the infrastructure that's there. Bloodhound's getting called in. Bike Rush owns, finds an, a weakness to potentially exploit the main base of Phoenix completely open and exposed. Sonic emitters might be coming up here for Phoenix. For now, it's just behemoths and that's gonna be enough to clear out that expansion. Bike Rush owns moving through the middle of the map with his army. His behemoths transferring down to the south side and Phoenix making some progress, but it feels uh, perhaps like a hollow victory. Space Command Uplink is back online. Bike Rush owns has completely fallen back from his assault on Phoenix's natural to instead deal with this attack at his own natural. Behemoths will bring down the War Factory. The MCV is going to, I guess, try and defend this location. I'm not sure that the MCV is going to be able to escape with the Marv, with the Behemoths, with all of the firepower of Bike Rush owns to bear. This might be lights out for this MCV. Behemoths going down and Bike Rush owns in a prime position to potentially take back those husks take them away from Phoenix. Phoenix coming in with the reinforcements. A couple of Titans, couple of Behemoths, couple of Mammoths as well. He rebuilt that Space Command uplink. If he could land a, an EMP, it might give him enough time. Behemoths starting to be reclaimed, starting to be claimed rather, as Bike Rush owns gets the capture on both of those husks. The MCB taking massive damage and Bike Rush owns will find the kill. Phoenix, this is not his day. These are not his two games. Playing well, but Bike Rush owns just finds those weaknesses and exploits them to the max. Adaptive Armor once again operated or uh, activated on these frontline units as Bike Rush owns is going to collapse around the back side of this army. Behemoth's getting targeted down. Rocket squads are here from Bike Rush Owns just to add extra firepower into the mix. And the Shockwave Artillery will land. It gets the Marv right off the bat. No chance for escape, and it's gonna be the Orbital Bombardment as the follow-up. Bike Rush Owns still has a ton of other stuff, but Phoenix has found his chance, found his opportunity. If only he could stop the infantry from tearing everything apart. Bike Rush Owns comes back online, and the Behemoths did not survive the onslaught of the rockets. Unfortunately for Phoenix, game number two, it's looking like is going to be another win for Bike Rush Owns. The GG gets called. I think no Sonic emitters in that match. And unfortunately for Phoenix, he'll win only another $10, 10 euros from game number two. Bike Rush Owns takes the victory, but let's see what happens in game number three. Which takes us to the map. Airport escape for game number three. In the north, playing the purple, playing Nod, this is Phoenix. Finally getting to see a non-Steel Talons faction 
And in the South Plain Vanilla GDI, this is Bike Rush Owns. Bike Rush Owns and Phoenix feeling a bit one-sided in the Bike Rush favor. But we'll see what Phoenix can come up with. He did not open Crane. Okay, that is actually kind of surprising here. I mean, it's a big map. There's Blue Tiberium. There's a four-minute rule. Like, uh, I'm genuinely surprised he didn't open Crane. By the way, I do want to clear something up. Aha, this is why. Also, he has the extra engineer. Um, I did not realize... Somewhere in the back of my mind, I had forgotten that Steel Talons doesn't have sonic emitters. I just assumed that for balance reasons, they did. But uh, yeah, no, no sonic emitters from Steel Talons. Flame Tank possibly spotted here by Bike Rush Owns. We'll see if his vision has caught it. Yes, indeed, that Rifleman does see that Flame Tank. He sees the Reckoner as well, so Bike Rush Owns is well aware that this is coming. And he also knows what this means in terms of the economy of Phoenix. Phoenix just doesn't have the same kind of blue Tiberium access that Bike Rush does. And that additional eco plus the size of the map is going to be a huge benefit to Bike Rush owns having a win against this flame rush that Phoenix is sending his way. Reckoner split off somewhere uh, off to the right side of the map. Tip Spike is a fair target. I mean, if your opponent already knows that this is coming, you might as well get something from it. Utilizing that flame tank to kill off the Tib Spike goes down there. Reckoner coming in might be able to burn down one of these refineries. We'll see. APCs get the lead on this Reckoner. And, uh, well, that's going to be a pretty much a complete shutdown. The Engineer is actually going to be the second unit inside of that. So there is not a second squad of Black Hand, unfortunately, for Phoenix. That Reckoner is escaping. He's going to actually run a long, long ways away. Well, it was a nice attempt. It uh, didn't quite work out the way Phoenix wanted, and now he is behind economically and not well suited for the mid game, but this is a big map. He knows that Bike Rush is going to be moving out soon. I guess Bike Rush owns could actually just tech up and play off of this one base economy that he's got set up on the left side and then just go for a bigger push in a couple of minutes instead of moving out almost immediately. But he knows Bike Rush owns is going to be on the offensive. It's just about preparing for that moment and uh, being ready when Bike Rush Owns actually shows up. Probably going to be Marv and Juggernauts, but we'll see what Bike Rush Owns chooses to do. There's the airfield. The command post is up and running for Bike. And we'll see Secret Shrine. The longer this goes on, the more chance Phoenix has of stabilizing. Going to be calling in the Shadow Teams. That's always fun. And uh, not something I necessarily expected. A couple of shadow team bombings of power plants might actually be extremely effective. Might be something that Bike Rush owns isn't expecting. Phoenix moving out with a couple of scorpion tanks. Definitely don't want to hit Bike Rush when he's got defender's advantage. Hammerheads and Orcas will get the drop on these Scorps. Uh, this is five Scorps versus two Hammerheads, plus a bunch of stuff on the ground. AP ammo has finished up. Rocket squads are here. Bike Rush owns getting the perfect defense there as he pushes away those Scorpion tanks with Hammerheads, getting just a free bit of damage on them. Reckoner getting caught. Shadow Teams going for the kill, and it's going to be the Shadow Teams getting hunted down by those pit bulls. Finally, the Reckoner has been forced to deploy, and that's going to be a kill on everything inside. Unfortunately for Phoenix, he doesn't quite get to escape. Shadow Team not doing much. Bike Rush owns catching sight of it somewhere, and uh, maybe getting, getting the drop on the Shadow Team instead of the Shadow Team surprising him. 
For Sonic Emitter is now deployed. That's a one euro bounty for Bike Rush owns. Obelisks could be coming up. We do have tier three. We've got double MCV. Phoenix is keeping his hopes alive. Going Reckoner as well. It's going to be late. It's going to be delayed. But we'll see, you know. There's a chance that he's able to withstand the juggernaut firepower of Bike Rush Owns. Immediately sells off the Reckoner, so he's not going to be using that as a base of operations to keep pushing forward. It's going to be a fight on the right side of the map. Bike Rush Owns has completely harvested his own main green field, and Phoenix is still maybe got 25% left. Just another showcase of how differently their economy panned out in the beginning of the game with that much bigger, faster boom for Bike Rush Owns. First refinery has been deployed for Bike Rush Owns. Pitbull's going to be moving in. Second Sonic Emitter shows up. Harvester's getting transferred perhaps a bit too early. Stealth Tank is here, but it's probably going to get eaten up by this GDI force. The Sonic Emitter gets the blast to kill off that Stealth Tank. Stealing two fields at once because that is the Bike Rush way. Two Euro bounty on the second Sonic Emitter. He's got three Euros left to win. And I think we're going to see some obelisks here. We got double obelisk building. So it's going to be a two Euro bounty coming in here for Phoenix. Win or lose, both of these guys are getting paid for this game. Second refinery gets deployed. That Marv has significantly cleaned up this left side field. Doesn't get lucky on a random crush. Ooh, Stealth Tank going to be running into a couple of mines there. I don't know when that mine drop was deployed by Bike Rush Owns, but the fact that he just got some random mines into the Phoenix side of the map and now a Stealth Tank just unfortunately runs into them when he could have run, run a little bit to the right or a little bit to the left and completely avoided them. Unfortunate for Phoenix. Shockwave Artillery. The RNG might allow this Redeemer to escape. And that is some Bike Rush level RNG double obelisk drop. And he's going to get the MCV on the transfer. This is not the end of the line for Bike Rush owns building. But the dodge of that shockwave artillery means it's a bunch of cash down the drain. And Phoenix has a chance to kill off some of these juggernauts. But there is not much to support this Redeemer. Another obelisk gets dropped. That's three, four euros now claimed for Phoenix in this game. And there is the three and four for Bike Rush Owns. I believe that completes his fourth Sonic Emitter. As the Redeemer falls, the MCV gets sold off. And Phoenix is going to tap out of the game. Yeah, when you start down on Eco and then your mid game, you're also down on Eco. And then the late game, your opponent has two fields and you've got none. You can't blame him for exiting the game. What is that? 30,000 credits. Okay, only only 23,000, not quite 30,000. But 23,000 spread out over nine minutes is quite a difference in army. And that will do it for game number three. Bike Rush Owns is controlling everything in this series. But Phoenix always has a chance to strike back and bring the pain. Which brings us to the map Battle Base Beaverton for game number four. In the north as the red GDI, this is Bike Rush Owns. And in the south as the purple black hand, this is Phoenix. I did want to see at least one real game on Battle Base Beaverton. At least, of course, if you saw the Holdout Challenge with Bike Rush Owns, then you probably saw this map quite a bit. But that was not a particular normal set of games. So I did want to see at least one normal 1v1 match with two players taking it seriously to see how this map actually plays out. Double blue Tiberium fields in on the high ground in the middle of the map. And other than that, you've got a natural expansion, which is quite far away. But you do have two Tib Spikes per player. A number of bridges 
I believe all of these bridges, even though they look like they are destructible bridges, I believe all of them are indestructible. So you cannot kill any of these bridges. There are no cutoffs. There are no, like, sanctuaries to hide yourself. There is EMP control centers in the corner of the map as well. Second refinery. Okay. All right. Everything's looking pretty normal for Phoenix. Packs up his MCV immediately. He's going to start his move towards his natural expansion and uh, probably deploy an extra power plant or two halfway there. But he's going to get his he's going to get his time served moving towards that and um, that natural expansion, which is surprisingly far away on this map. Rocket APCs. Never missing a beat with these rocket APCs. Bike Rush owns loves this as an opener. I mean, he, he wins games, so you can't exactly fault him. However, he does manage to do it. Wow, is he just going two, maybe three? Yeah, third one with the rifleman inside of it. Okay. All right, a little bit thinner, no four rocket APCs, just two rocket APCs and a rifle APC. MCV has deployed a good long distance away from that natural, and it's going to be a couple of rocket squads on the Phoenix side as well. Buggy getting added on. Uh, he's definitely not going refinery from this far away. Goes secret shrine, okay. Right for the Black Disciple upgrade, he... Once those additional flame units. Bike Rush Owens has made it to his natural expansion. APCs patrolling the high ground. Couple of pit bulls as well. Making sure that there's no stealing of Bike Rush's Blue Tiberium. Phoenix is going to be able to steal his own high ground Blue Tiberium. Nicely done. Sc Scouting Buggy gets taken out there. Something dies, that's for sure. APC still finds the target, still finds the conyard. No refinery in sight for Phoenix, not even started. He's going to have to scramble, put up a little bit of defense so that he can save his MCV and save his expansion. This would be a terrible spot to take an L in this game. Bike's going to be targeting down the Harvesters. A good strike here for Phoenix. The defense of Bike Rush owns should be enough. The combination of just a couple of watchtowers against so few bikes will be enough to push them back. Unfortunately... Phoenix wasn't able to keep this infantry force with his bikes and hit all at the same time. He actually could have had a chance to do some real damage. In this case, they might be able to jump on top of the command post, might be able to get the power plants just to deny Bike Rush owns some of this mining time. Now that rifleman inside of that APC is absolutely perfect. Bike Rush owns did know that he was up against a black hand player. So he would have that information before the game starts, and that will do it. The Harvester cleans up the rest of them, and it's going to be Shatterers as the follow-up. Bike Rush owns his economy at the Natural Expansion, is ahead of Phoenix. Three Harvesters already working away. A little bit of lost mining time, but not anything significant by any means. And it's just the one Harvester at the Expansion. Maybe going to add on a second. There we go. Second Harvester up and running, and Bike Rush Owns is looking to put a, put, pit, put a bit of pressure on the main base of Phoenix. The defenses might be a little bit thin. He's mostly relying on infantry, a bit slow to respond, and APC Shatterer is going to rip that infantry column apart. One APC does go down, second APC gets jumped, and that's going to be a third APC down the drain as well. Sonic Emitters, or Shaw Sonic Chatter is rather just looking for other targets to fire upon, not at all concerned by the infantry, and the infantry will clean everything up. So only the Pit Bulls left, well, in a moment. Last rockets, there we go. Only the Pit Bulls left. They will find a kill on a Harvester. One more blast, and there it goes. Phoenix finds a little bit of defense. Doesn't find the damage against Bike Rush Owns on the other side of the map, but he doesn't lose too much at his main base. 
I guess we'll see how quickly Phoenix can get up to that tier three, go into that late game because Bike Rush Jones is almost certainly going to be heading there now, probably starting his tech center now. Double War Factory on the right side of the map for Bike Rush Jones. A third War Factory on the left side of the map, harvesting the blue Tiberium on the high ground. Another section of infantry getting caught and killed. Phoenix going for a couple of flame tanks. I love the addition of flame tanks around the side. If only you could stealth them, but alas, you're playing black hand. The main base is gutted. Phoenix is going to have to cut and run, and he has not harvested all of that Tiberium. That potential income has been lost here for Phoenix. APC is going to be coming in. Might be going for the mine drop, but it's going to be the scout for the Orca strike, if nothing else. Flame tank does get spotted, so Bike Rush Owns does know that the flames are potentially on the way to him. He catches one of them in the middle of the map. He's going to be seeing the flame tank. He will be losing a power plant to it. Doesn't lose the command post, but Phoenix hasn't found much more damage than a single power plant second flame tank is moving out his own main base has fallen his defense is completely gone at the main three power plants gonna get targeted down none of them upgraded but unfortunately well that one might survive hey look at that phoenix has a surviving power plant bike rush owns hoping to lock this one up with a 3-0 advantage or a 4-0 advantage and uh not let Phoenix get any of that 25 euro win money. But hope still springs eternal. All right, Flame Tank isn't going to get through quickly, but it won't get through at all. I thought maybe he'd get a little bit of damage onto that command post, and then the command post would just be like this group goal. You know, one Flame Tank can't kill the command post, but maybe... By their powers combined, two, three, four flame tanks can kill the command post. Uh, one click. Chemical plant is here. Ah, I don't think his, his scouting harvesters got in as far as he had hoped. One click. Maybe not. Did he? He must have gotten vision with the bike. Yeah, he got vision with the bike. He might not have the cash. APCs closing in from the west, from the north. There we go. Now we got it. Boom. Gets the click on the refinery. Bike Rush Owns is going to be reasonably okay with that. It's not a wonderful thing to have happen, but he's going to be comfortable enough with how the game has gone. Even though he's lost a Tib Spike, he has taken two Tib Spikes away from Phoenix. So Phoenix burns down one tip spike, loses two to the engineer cap of Bike Rush Owns. And Bike Rush Owns, he's sitting pretty. Double MCV, Marv, he's got two engineers. Okay, yeah, there's the second engineer going to be jumping inside of that Marv. I don't even think we have a Redeemer engineering facility on the ground for Phoenix. And this Marv is going to be marching towards his base momentarily. Juggernaut's already out on the field. More Juggernauts are to come. Second Refinery has been reestablished at the Natural. And Bike Rush Owns is just looking like he is in total control. Although, hey, free Juggernaut maybe. Not so much free as this Purifier is going to go down. And, oh, actually, he won't even get the Juggernaut. So, goodbye Purifier. Uh, maybe Purifier for free, unfortunately, there for Phoenix. One Sonic Emitter, that's another bounty claimed by Bike Rush Owns. We'll see if there's any obelisks on the return fire. There are Spectres, so that is the hope for Phoenix to hold the line for Phoenix to push back Bike Rush Owns here on the west side of Battle Base Beaverton. Buggy comes in for the scout, gets eliminated. Bike Rush Owns going to try and deny any more Tib Spike recaptures. But uh, he's at least got the two tip spikes, so he's happy about that. Second Sonic Emitter gets deployed. The Amarv continuing to just burn its way forward. He is going to be crushing this MCV in mere moments. A couple of rocket squads are here. Predator tanks going to be going deep into enemy territory, looking for those specters to shut them down. Not going to be letting his Marv take that artillery damage, and it looks like Phoenix... Well, he gets one obelisk, so that's an additional Euro going to be coming in, but that MCV is not long for this world. Marv taking a bit of damage there. A couple of rocket squads would be nice to defend over at the natural expansion, but Phoenix cannot afford anything, and I don't think he's got double MCV snuck away, hidden somewhere on the map. 
So that will do it for Phoenix's main base. He is going to need something that we have never seen to stop this army, to stop Bike Rush owns, who might even just drop a refinery at Phoenix's main base, which has a significant amount of Tiberium in it. And Bike Rush owns will have control of three Tib fields. And actually, Phoenix does get does get that second tip spike so little victories here and there phoenix is just not finding success in any of these games uh yep, there's the fire sale from phoenix the gg gets called and bike rush owns continues his march of domination which also means that he wins the extra 100 euros. Now, of course, Phoenix can come back at any point in this series, take a couple of wins, and put a couple of points on the board, but he gets paid regardless, and that'll do it for this game. Let's jump into the next match, which takes us to Tiki Turmoil and the loving smile of the Walrus Man. We never cease to be amazed at the walrus man, but also we never cease to wonder why. I believe Technique made this map, so maybe he can explain it, but in the north, playing as the purple GDI, this is Phoenix. He is down 04, but he has still claimed himself a couple of obelisk bounties and a couple of uh, euros from those losses. Meanwhile, in the south, looking good today, playing Marked of Cain. This is Bike Rush Owns. It does feel like Phoenix is losing control before the late game. And I feel like really putting on a lot of pressure to go into the late game economically is where he should be starting these matches. But he is playing, I don't know, maybe a bit more defensive, a bit more guarded instead of just going for it, man, with the eco. And I'm thinking especially of that game on Airport Escape where you got that blue Tiberium right there and he goes for a flame rush and it's a giant map. And I mean, Bike Rush Owns gets the scout on it anyways, but like that kind of thing it's just he has not been set up well for the late game i guess maybe game number one and game number two he was actually better set up he had those behemoths he was looking pretty fine for most of it bike rush owns going to be playing marked of kane and phoenix switching it up to vanilla gdi so even though the score won't ever oh the mcv is going to get emp'd here it'll be annoying but it's not the end of the world you only get the three MC, M, uh, three EMPs. I almost said three MCVs with these scouts. Okay, there's the deploy, so he's going to take a bit less damage from these Awakened squads. You can see how much damage Awakened squads do to vehicles. Like, the MCV, when it's in vehicle mode, just takes so much health damage from those little pew-pew guns of the Awakened squads. And that is, again, just one of those things that Bike Rush owns does... It does it win him the game? Absolutely not. Does it maybe tilt his opponent a little bit and just make them unsettled and annoyed? Absolutely. That's one of those things that it's just a little win that you can... Oh my gosh, he actually gets the APC here. Bike Rush owns the Awakened Squads and the Buggy joining together to kill that APC. And that is, uh, you know, again, not like a win, but oh, the EMP whiffs, so... At least Phoenix has that. He's get he gets the uh, he gets the miss on the EMP. Second War Factory at the Natural Expansion. Bike Rush owns is looking to put a bit of pressure on. Phoenix does scout this, so he's gonna have the intel. He's gonna know what's coming his way. He's not got some big disadvantage yet. He's maybe a bit disadvantaged, but he can certainly bounce back out of this. All right, second War Factory is here, so Phoenix is well set up. He can queue a couple of watchtowers behind this if he wants as well. He might be a little bit thin on money, but now that the bike buggy has backed off, he can go back into the refineries, go back into the bike, into the eco, and Bike Rush Owns is doing the same, just arriving there slightly differently. Okay, the Pitbulls didn't, like, 
just head off to the opposite side of the map and then leave those those harvesters completely exposed. Fortunately, Phoenix is ready and waiting. Bike Buggy going to be cutting off back to the left side of the map. And Bike Rochones is set up for going into, it looks like, Big Scorpion numbers. We'll see if he goes directly for the late game or if he tries to hang out here in the mid game. Of course, no upgrades for these Scorpions. Well, no laser capacitors for these Scorpions specifically. No late game attack upgrades. No EMPs landing on these pit bulls, so they are going to mostly escape. Going to try and trade out against the bikes, trade out against the Scorpion. Maybe worth committing to one last attack against that Scorpion just to get the kill. Doesn't look like he'll do it. Yeah, the Scorpion's cycling back, but he does get a kill on a Scorpion, so take everything that you can get. Bike Rush owns, goes for the Operations Center, and he might just be happy to play this off of two bases straight into the Redeemer. Meanwhile, it is going to be an airfield on the field. Maybe Orcas out for Phoenix. No, he's going Hammerheads. MCV on the move for Phoenix. His third base is going to be right on time, but he does not want to tech up. Uh, wait, is this a what kind of a what kind of a play is that? Bike Rush Jones may have actually timed this out so that he can get the chemical plant just before the vision fades away at the natural expansion, and then he can click the refineries, which there's still a lot of cash in this natural expansion. There we go. Yep. So Bike Rush Jones timed that out. His, his chemical plant was maybe halfway done. And he, you know, I forget what the timing is for how long Vision stays around after a unit dies. It's about 100 years from what I remember. But, uh, yeah, so you, you can scout out before the building is actually finished and then drop the magnetic mine does deploy. Drop the chemical, the catalyst missile after the fact. One Obelisk is here. Phoenix is going to be fighting this one out. No upgrades on the Predator tanks for this GDI player. Big EMP lands on two. Well, actually, no, that's a dead APC. So one of everything there. And Bike Rush Owns claims one obelisk bounty, but not yet a second. His avatars are instead the lasers on the ground defeating this army. There's going to be the second obelisk, another bounty claimed by Bike Rush Owns. And Phoenix is going to be forced to back off. If he had rail guns, that would be a very different fight. But rail guns haven't even started for Phoenix. He's got that tier three over towards that third base, but his MCV never actually completed the journey all the way down. He paused a little bit earlier and he's been playing this one off of just one. No, there's the second refinery on the south side of the field. So he does have those two refineries, but Bike Rush Owns is skipping a traditional third base in instead just going to be crossing the map and going for Phoenix's third base and he's saying let's fight it out here Phoenix has the juggernauts which is fantastic love to see that Redeemer engineering facility on the field for bike rush owns so I think he's going to have that timing advantage over the Marv the Marv hasn't even started so no help here for Phoenix Sonic emitter has been deployed so that's a bounty claimed by Phoenix Radar jamming missile fires off as well. And it looks like Bike Rush Owns might be able to drop a couple of refineries on this field just to try and steal it away from Phoenix. Blue Tiberium getting harvested a bit there by Phoenix, perhaps a bit more consistently by Bike Rush Owns as he sends another harvester there. Second Sonic Emitter gets deployed. Phoenix is going to be claiming some bounties and he will take this field. So Phoenix gets the win at the third base. He has got a shot. He has got a shot here to take this game number five. And I mean, if he wins any of these games, that is going to be, you know, a win that he would not have gotten in a traditional, in a traditional best of seven. Spectre's uh, complete whiff there, but he is going for the kill on the... No, he's not going for the kill on the tip crystal. I was like, is Bike Rochon's really going to go for that? EMP catches one of those pit bulls. Not the biggest win here, but...
defending that blue Tiberium as Phoenix is hoping to take some of that double income for himself. Juggernaut's peppering those avatars in the middle of the map. It would be nice for Bike Rush Owens to uh, be, you know, given a taste of his own medicine. Phoenix, if he can claim a couple of kills there, get a couple of captures on the husks, that would go a long way towards building his late game army and fighting that Redeemer. One avatar does go down. Mammoths are here. Railguns. Still no railguns. Oh, I, I forgot. I'm not actually sure what the changes to railguns were in R19. Railguns may have been reduced in effectiveness a little bit. They're still 4,000 a minute 30. So I believe that is unchanged. Magnetic Mines, great drop there on top of that army. Just chewing away at those health bars pretty significantly on the Predator and that APC, but a little bit off of the Mammoth Tank as well. A couple of Harvesters going to be having to run away from the front line, which is now the main base of Bike Rush Owns. Double Refinery on the third. Marv is out and walking around. Phoenix is primed for the ultimate GDI late game. An MCV moving around the map, Sonic Emitters, a wall of juggernauts, and a Marv. That is the ultimate GDI late game. No free kill on the tier three. Phoenix was going for it. He doesn't quite find it. Not quite enough DPS to bring that down before he would get eliminated. EMP lands on a couple of the Predator tanks, and this excursion force from Phoenix will get cleaned up, but he will get the scout on just exactly how many venoms there are. There are way too many venoms in this game and it's going to be supercharged particle beams versus those AA turrets that Phoenix is deploying. Phoenix pushes in. Oh my gosh, supersonic airstrike it looks like clears out the whole crowd of venoms. Might actually be able to be able to get the kill on a couple of these specters as well. That would be a great snipe here from Phoenix. The EMP's causing a bit of problem, causing a bit of mayhem here, but some of these specters going down. Unfortunately, most of the pit bulls getting eliminated as well, and the rage gen just going to be making this even more difficult as two more pit bulls go down. And eventually the third will fall. Finally, Bike Rochones cleans up that force from Phoenix. Orc is coming in. One Harvester down. Second Harvester might die before the Venoms clear out the last of the Orcas. But no, the Orcas get cleaned out. Orca Strike comes in, tags the refinery, but not much more than that. Engineer should jump inside of that Redeemer. And Bike Rush owns looking to stabilize. EMPs won't land on the Marv just yet. Triple Zone Trooper, one Engineer inside of that. And Phoenix takes the tip spike as well. Hammerhead's going to have a hard time finding any real value as these supercharged Particle Beam Venoms are just too powerful. EMP lands, barely catches that Marv here. And I think there's enough EMPs coming in here to chain this. Three more EMPs are here. Phoenix has been caught. Phoenix has been killed, but it's going to be the return fire. Orbital Bombardment in the combination with Shockwave Artillery. And the AA Tower is here to save that Marv Redeemer. And three, maybe four avatars offline, but it's not enough. As Bike Rush owns, finds the kill against the Marv. Cash down the drain, and Phoenix can't get a win another game claimed here by bike rush owns racking up those 25 euro wins and phoenix getting closer on that one but this is not his day unfortunately and bike rush owns looking mortal in that game unlike games two three and four perhaps but uh still not enough let's jump into game number six which sends us to Murderer's Row for game number six. Traditionally a 2v2 map, but in this case, we'll be playing a 1v1 on it. Forced cross spawns in the northern position as the red nod. This is Bike Rush Owns. Up 5-0 in this best of seven, so to speak. In the south side, looking for his first win and to put the last two points on the board as the pink nod. This is Phoenix. 
on a different day of the week, Phoenix and Bike Rush owns at least in the replays that I've seen from, you know, like the middle of this year, it's been a much tighter back and forth, much closer games, and either Phoenix is not attuned to the changes of 1.02 plus R19, or it's just not his day. I don't know, but like, Phoenix's play is not what we would typically expect from Phoenix. He's feeling a little bit unsure of himself maybe a little not really sloppy in a lot of ways i mean he's made some maybe questionable strategic decisions but he also just got caught by a couple of uh, unfortunate mistakes i do kind of love the you know with the way the engine is designed anytime you go to a new area like all of the destruction spawns in all of the uh animation that's like preset from the building destruction. And so sometimes it all happens at once, like four buildings, just big old chunks of them jump out at you. Aha, I got you. But I think we've, I think we've queued all of the destruction animations. Bike Rush is going to be making a move into the middle of the map. This is not what I had in mind when I, when uh, I selected this map. I didn't think he would just go for the blue Tiberium in the middle, but I guess that makes sense. I kind of, you know, thought maybe it would be a bit more of a fight around the edges. And uh, the blue Tiberium would sort of be like this wasteland that both players are attacking. But uh, is Bike Rashon's going to get free reign on this blue Tiberium and then he's just going to have double income? Because if so, uh, Phoenix can make the comeback. Uh, huh. This is not a great start for Phoenix. He is going to get an eye on this. He is going to see exactly what Bike Rush Owns is doing, and Bike Rush Owns doesn't really have a way to stop this Stealth Harvester. He could have a couple of bikes swing down here. I don't know that he actually has any bikes ready and raring to go, so... It actually might be two Harvesters to steal the Blue Tiberium. Phoenix is actually getting perhaps a little bit lucky here, Operation Center, and it's going to be multi-MCV right from the get-go for Bike Rush Owns. So there are no bikes, there are no units to actually kill off these Harvesters, and this is kind of perfect for Phoenix. He's going to be able to steal a couple of loads of that Blue Tiberium, which is going to be a pretty big boost to his eco. It's not as big of a boost as it is for Bike Rush Owns, but three loads of Blue Tiberium, especially because you're denying those three loads of Blue Tiberium from Bike Rush, and you're getting to uh, relatively short drive times to the middle of the map. Like, this actually is probably as good as you could hope for. There's going to be the Tech Lab. It is going to be Mass Obelisk coming out from this multi-MCV. It's going to be three MCVs as well. So it's not even just two MCVs. It is going to be multi-MCV and Phoenix. Uh, okay, he's going for his own multi-MCV. This could be a battle of the obelisks to really claim those bounties. The middle of the map is gone. And this is the point where Bike Rush Owns is actually a little bit worse set up. Now, the multi-MCV does a good job to even things out. But Phoenix set this expansion up over here on the left side of the map. We saw that outpost heading out earlier on in this game. And this has actually worked out very well. Uh, as, as, as things were developing, it looked like this was a win for Bike Rush Owns. Hands down, no comeback for Phoenix. But... He stole a significant portion of that blue Tiberium. He's got a sneaky expansion on the left side of the map, which I don't think Bike Rush owns. Well, he's about to scout it, but I don't think he scouted it yet. And he's got his own multi-MCV cranking, so he may be a little bit behind in the eco game, but he is well set up with a nice foundation. And, okay, this is where things might start to crumble. Going to be an immediate snipe. Double Obelisk is here for Bike Rush Owns. He's going to get the drop on that expansion and not much of a chance for return fire when your opponent already has two Obelisks set up and you've got nothing. So, good by expansion. Unfortunately for Phoenix, I don't think this expansion paid for itself, but it, you know, might have gotten close. And then maybe one more minute, and it would have really started to pay off for Phoenix. Now it's just looking a little bit sad as Bike Rush owns double expands to two of the middle fields, and he has an opportunity to take one of these side fields as well. Phoenix hoping to take an additional side field, another main base in this four-player map, as well as potentially get his own obelisks out onto the field 
field with his own triple MCV at home. Is this quant MCV? Yes, it is for probably both players. There's another one for Bike Rush Owns. So yeah, I think this is four MCVs per player. And Bike Rush Owns is up to two, maybe three obelisk bounties here in the south. One obelisk at least for Phoenix. Uh, I have, I'm pretty confident we're going to get up to five obelisks per player. Big EMP lands on this obelisk. Nicely done there by Bike Rochones. Does it really get him anything? No, because he doesn't have an MCV in range to do anything about this. So the obelisk will come back online and immediately blast that raider buggy. Bike Rush owns, he has got the start of the obelisk bounty, but this is not the end. Triple obelisk gets deployed against the double obelisk, and this is going to be an easy five euro bounty for both players here in game number six. And it's gonna be a win on the south side at the six o'clock position for Phoenix. We'll see if he's able to hold it. It's three against two, so in the north, he's winning as well. Phoenix has found... No, it's three against two the wrong way, so Bike Rush Owns is winning in the north. But yeah, both of these players are going to be able to get that bounty nice and easy. The Harvester's absorbing some of these shots here, turning it into a, well, 4v2 now, as unfortunately for Bike Rush Owns... Or excuse me, unfortunately for Phoenix, he's going to be losing his foothold in the north. And this is some extreme obelisk wars. Not something I recall seeing in a normal game of Kane's Wrath, but here on Murderer's Row, it is the norm. Bike Rush owns starting to split the map in half. Phoenix losing more and more ground, but he's still got this field under his control and he's still got this main field back here, the rest of that Tiberium. It's a big Tiberium field that you start on. And this is just mass MCV. Bike Rush owns with a wall of, a wall of obelisks and actually, because he's focus firing so much more effectively than Phoenix, his previous numbers disadvantage has turned into a numbers advantage. Phoenix losing another field, and it looks like he is going to be losing his six o'clock base as well, as Phoenix is oh, gonna have a lot of obelisks to deal with. Too many MCVs and too much leapfrogging as the EMPs fire off on both sides. No, just on the Phoenix side, and they catch every single obelisk. If only Phoenix had more obelisks online to actually burn down the defenses of Bike Rush Owns. That EMP didn't actually catch anything because it was a bit laggy, a bit of a bug there visually. And that is going to be the end of this MCV. <laughs> well, we'll see. These obelisks, they're getting queued up one after the other to attack this MCV. One random awakened squad or something in the north there. Militant squad just hanging out. Another MCV falls. Phoenix losing ground slowly but surely to the mass obelisk of Bike Rush Owns. And well, that will do it. Game number six goes to Bike Rush. The mass obelisk wars have been won. And that is a bit of a different play. Not something that I expected to see in this show match, but yet here we are. All right, let's jump into game number seven. These guys being a bit goofy, playing around and enjoying the format. Let's see what happens in the last match which takes us to Tournament Badlands for game number seven in the North Plain as the Yellow Steel Talons. This is Phoenix. And in the South Plain as the Red Steel Talons, this is Bike Rush Owns. I don't know why I just kind of choked there on the word Steel Talons, but it's another Steel Talons mirror, so I guess we can write off the Sonic Emitter bounties in this one. And, you know, Phoenix has a chance to take this game number seven. He still has a chance. Every single game does indeed matter. And it's not going to be a lot, but it will be something. He's got the bounties from some of those other matches. I think he's got 10 euros in bounties as well. So it looks like he's going to be walking away with a minimum of 80 euros, maybe even claiming a 25 euro win from this last game. And it's actually going to be a fast airfield. Phoenix, what are you doing, man? 
but we'll see what he's got planned. Bike Rush Owns may not be expecting this at all. Let's jump over to his vision real quick. There's he's got some scouting squads in the middle of the map, and he has no idea about this, but he is definitely going to get the vision on this with double riflemen as the scout. There's no way for Phoenix to kill this fast enough and deny the scout. Double Orca has been spotted. Technically not. Bike Rochons didn't actually see the Orcas, but he did see the airfield. He sees the third Orca, and I think he even glimpsed them on the south side. But, like, you don't need to see the Orcas to know exactly what this is going, what this is, and what your opponent is doing. Double Pitbull is here. Might have to sacrifice one Harvester to get the kill. Orcas coming in, going to be dodging and weaving. There are three or four pit bulls. Two Orcas going to be distracting, and it might be the engineers that get the real win here. Bike Rush Owens is going to be looking at his main base, so he will indeed see this. He's going to have to pack up his MCV because pit bulls don't kill engineers on the ground quickly at all. And just in time, moments before that watchtower actually came online to kill off that engineer. It's going to be a win for Bike Rush either way. But Phoenix strikes, I believe, one harvester. Bike Rush owns back online. His MCB has redeployed. Watchtower is getting added on, and he's going to pack it back up and head for the natural. One refinery versus two extra harvesters versus none. Phoenix, um, well, hope springs eternal, and he will find himself with a paycheck regardless of this series, regardless of this outcome. Big thanks to As109 once again for donating the uh, 415 euros to this show match giving these players something to fight for and uh phoenix is literally attacking his own mcv uh i i mean if he plays this one out normally he is pretty much dead so uh he is literally gonna kill off his own mcv and I guess that will signal the end of this game. Phoenix, I think, getting perhaps tilted in this series. He does give chase for a moment. And, uh, well, his MCV will take some significant damage. Bike Rush owns going for the expansion. And, uh, yeah, you know, may, he, he could try. Oh, he's actually going to heal up his own MCV. He's goofing around at this point. Uh, he could try and play this one out, but the fact that he had no War Factory and he did not kill all of the Harvesters of Bike Rush Owns means that this is an extremely difficult game to play out. And Bike Rush Owns is going for Harvester APCs as the follow-up. So these guys, either they're in voice chat or they are just goofing on each other. And it's going to be Mass Engineer from Phoenix. So I don't know if these guys typed to each other or if they were in voice chat or something, but they're clearly both happy with, you know, how this game has gone so far in terms of they've accepted it. I guess happy might not be the right term. They have accepted the outcome of this game based on the openings. Phoenix went for something pretty, well, very risky, very all in in a normal sense. Obviously, it didn't end the game, but it... uh was difficult for Phoenix to come back from this. No, don't kill your own conyard. I want to see how many of these harvesters you can kill with your combat engineers. And it's going to be pit bulls <laughs> versus infantry. The pit bulls are, I don't uh, think, force firing. Oh my gosh, he is killing pit bulls with combat engineers. Never before seen. This is pit bulls versus combat engineers, and the combat engineers win. In this fight, pit bulls against combat engineers, though engineers are the winners. And, uh, well, Phoenix's MCV does eventually go down. How long does it take these combat engineers to kill off this heavy harvester? They can do it. All right, this is actually, you know, this is significant. That's a decent amount of DPS. I mean, that's like eight grand worth of combat engineers, but... Mass Harvester just crushing all of those combat engineers. Going to be claiming a couple of rank ups as well as these engineers just keep on coming out from the 
the harvesters to kill and uh, one of those one of those riflemen goes into the uh oh that's what so apparently the game did crash and that will do it for game number seven there was a, there was a mention about a game crash in game number seven but uh i think i see what happened there a little bit of a goofy game to finish us out these two guys having fun with it and phoenix you know i always like to see a rush i like to see something really aggressive game number seven that's a bold place to come out with your biggest rashest game strategy ever but That'll do it for this series. I believe the final count was 175, so 275 plus the bounties for Bike Rush and 80 euros, including the bounties for Phoenix. That'll do it for game number seven for this series. Big thanks to As109 for sponsoring a little bit of a different show match and uh, you know showing a bit of a different side. These games were fun to watch, but they were definitely one-sided. Phoenix, not his day. At the end of it, that was not his best series. But thank you all very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it regardless, and this is Cyber signing out.